so my name is Jean-François Guigon. I'm from IRD, the Re French Research Institute for Research in Developing Countries. I'm also a scientific advisor for the United Nations International Program Future Earth through its EcoHealth Research Initiative. So EcoHealth is in French, Ecology de la Santé. Uh, and I'm also uh, a panel member of uh, CSS1, Scientific Council 9, from INSEAD. So uh, I will focus on waterborne disease. Uh, and why to focus on waterborne disease? This is first just for brevity of my talk. I could have uh, developed on uh, host reservoir disease as well, like Ebola, for instance, or on vector-borne diseases. But I decided to concentrate this talk on waterborne disease like cholera, not notably. And uh, why? Because, I mean, in general, this type of infectious disease that are present in the tropics, but they can be present in these temperate areas as well, uh, are highly sensitive to any uh, variability of the aquatic ecosystems here, of the temperature notably, because there are free-living microbial forms uh, embedded into natural ecosystems. So they are highly sensitive to any uh, modification of the ecosystem into the which into the which they are embedded into the which they live in. So, is it necessary to define what is weather, climate variability, and climate change, global change? Is it necessary, or is it okay with you? Okay. So, I will introduce this thought by some concepts first. I mean, life is uh, organized in what we call. Uh, hierarchical level from cells. This is quite the same I illustration as the one given by Robert in his talk, okay, but organized differently. So I'm pleased to share this picture, uh, this diagram with you. This is uh, for press now uh, at PLOS Pathogens, where we are discussing on the necessity to get a bigger picture and even to study Ebola virus disease, okay? So in general, if we look at and across three fields of research, which can be biomedical sciences, public health sciences, and ecological sciences, in general, I mean, uh, biomedical sciences is looking at and searching on from molecules, genes, to population, or individual level, when uh, public health is looking at individual and population level, and ecological research is trying to embrace to different levels of organization. So if you want to understand long-term processes, indeed, you need to look at the scale at which these uh, long-term patterns and processes will, will happen. So you need to open the window in order to get a bigger picture. So if you want to understand long-term patterns and processes due to climate change, you need to study, I mean, these patterns and processes that will happen at the bigger scale. And this is what is not known, actually, uh, in medical sciences. So I, will, I, I have tried to rotate uh, this, uh, this picture uh, using a PowerPoint, but tonight I didn't succeed in, so, okay. So I will put this uh, organization, rotating uh, it, okay, like that, just to make an analogy with the, the iceberg uh, picture. So, in general, health sciences and most of the research concentrated on small bricks, okay, and on short-term patterns, processes, because there are, I mean, high connections between looking at uh, small breaks and short-term patterns and processes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Upper-scale patterns and processes may interact on else on else concerns in predictable and unpredictable ways, but you need to understand this on the long term. So for waterborne disease, we have in general, I mean, if we use the statistics from the World Health Organization, really underestimated case number per year, and we can get a more realist realistic estimation with several millions of cases and deaths due to waterborne disease in the world, 
um, due to now additional cases due to climate change and other global environmental change. People in the world are not dying the more, the most sorry from HIV or malaria or tuberculosis. They are indeed dying from waterborne disease which are due to virus disease, bacterial disease, protozoan disease, okay? So I will start uh, my presentation with uh, cholera. So cholera is due to uh, a bacterium that in general live in any uh, aquatic coastal marine system. So I will, will not detail uh, more about a cholera bacterium disease life cycle. Uh, this work has been done by uh, a young scientist at my institute at Kolkata and Mad Lab, where he has demonstrated the existence of seasonal variation, at least for Kolkata in India, in India, seasonal variation in cholera. And when you look at a bigger picture on which you try to understand the disease life cycle of this bacterium and correlating this uh, number of cases during a year with some environmental parameters, there is a strong link with here, you can see the high correlation, correlation between the two with SST, so SST, the sea surface temperature, because the disease life cycle of this bacterium is highly sensitive to any, again, I mean, increase in sea surface temperature. Because this is a bacterium that is highly embedded into the natural environment and any modification of this natural environment can be good or wrong for the disease life cycle here of this bacterium. This is quite the same with CHL. So, so this is the chlorophyll concentration because the disease life cycle of the bacterium is strongly linked to some, I mean, organisms, algae nota notably, that are uh, found in the ecosystem. And of course, uh, this is also strongly, strongly linked to the rainfall values, you can see. Uh, at least for Kolkata. So this is at, uh, say, at, at one year scale with seasonal variation. But this, does this, I mean, seasonality for this uh, waterborne disease, so the so-called cholera, uh, may fluctuate in time during uh, many years. So if you do the same, but from across different years, you uh, obtain quite the same. So, I mean, cholera cases uh, are illustrated in red, red cube, and this is uh, highly synchronous to some other parameters like SST, of course, okay? So when you look at bigger pictures to understand through this time series, I mean, the correlation that can exist or not between cholera cases and many other parameters, uh, you can find a correlation between sea surface temperature because this is one important component within natural and aquatic environment for the disease life uh, cycle of this bacterium. The same for other parameters. So this is just an illustration. All people near Kolkata and MATLAB in, in Bangladesh are uh, controlling for, I mean, the infection using, I mean, sari, you know, the, the, the suit, sari, that they use as a filter to filter the water. Uh, and they, so they collect the bacterium, but uh, they also collect the algae onto which the bacterium can uh, uh, be hosted or onto the small animals host on uh, onto which the bacterium can uh, be hosted. So doing the same for many different countries, tropical countries in the, the world. So this is a nice uh, work done in Senegal, the same story. So here, cholera in Dakar, uh, this is the number of cases of cholera in Dakar. We will you see a boom producing this epidemic of cholera, which is highly dependent on, of course, I mean, flooding in the, in the area, okay? But studying this on the long term, okay? Uh, having, collecting, I mean, data for the disease agent, disease case with the many different uh, parameters, some being drivers, 
for the disease life cycle, we are able to produce here what we call early warning system. So long-term series can help to produce uh, early warning system when you collect on a long-term trend all the information uh, that is needed to understand the interactions between the bacterium, its different host in the environment, the different environmental parameters needed to boost the bacteria, uh, population, bacterium population in the aquatic ecosystems and the exposition uh, uh, with human individuals and population. So depending on, I mean, the elevation of sea surface temperature, uh, several days or two weeks before, we can inform uh, public health authorities in Senegal. So you need to take care because all the conditions within the environment are met to realize and produce epidemics of cholera because, again, cholera, Vibrio cholera, is strongly associated with these multiple parameters. So another illustration is bully ulcer cases. Bully ulcer cases is due to mycobacterium ulcerans. This is from the group of mycobacterium leprae, mycobacterium tuberculosis. This is a tiny microbe living in, in uh, aquatic ecosystems all over the tropical world, and this disease is present in French Guiana, which is a territory of France in the north of Brazil, northeast of Brazil, okay? And it can produce this kind of skin disease, ulcer, I mean. So here you have the, I mean, the time series for uh, cases of bully ulcer in uh, French Guiana, you can see that sometimes you, it produces some epidemics and some inter-epidemics. And in blue, you have the uh, population size in French in Guiana in total number of inhabitants there. So when you produce some, what we call, I mean, time series analysis uh, uh, at very short term, you can see that, I mean, this is what is in, so the, the, the cases of bully ulcer are in blue, okay? And in red, this is the rainfall fluctuation. On here, across different years, but you can see here that the, most of the cases of bully ulcer in French Guiana, across the different years, appears when you observe uh, a largest variability in rainfall variation as observed here. And this is due to the fact that with the rainfall, during the rainfall player period, I mean, uh, the, uh, the, the, the marsh and swamps are totally flooded, okay, and which is very good for the mycobacterium to flourish and to develop. And during the dry season, I mean, the, uh, most of the swamps are dried, and so the people are able to come to go through and across this type of ecosystem that are now drier to hunt and to fish and to collect some crabs and to be more exposed to the natural disease agents. So that being more exposed, they can contract the disease infection. But what happens on the very long term across different years, you can see that, I mean, so in blue, this is the number of cases of bully ulcer and in red, this is the time series analysis for the evolution of rainfall values. So again, on a long-term trend, I mean, most of the cases appear during periods of lowest values of, flood or, or, or flooding, as already explained to you. And we, are, we can model here with that with the, uh, an increase of the rainfalls during the next year in French Vienna, we could observe I mean, uh, an increase in bully ulcer cases in the region. So understanding on the long term the evolution of disease cases with the many different environmental parameters. Some are just used as proxies, proxies but th some are a component of the ecological niche of the mycobacterium here. We can uh, model, I mean, on the trend of evolution of uh, the disease uh, and disease number of cases in time. So this has been published in this paper. Uh, so, I mean, today in health science, we are confronted to two opposite. So I like this picture, okay? 
uh, two opposite, but fortunately complementary ways for today and future research orientation. I mean, in one way direction, we are focusing on the description of virus. We are, de we are uh, in my uh, field of research, we are focusing on the description of bacteria, I'm sorry. Uh, but this just represents biological hazards. You do not uh, describe virus, you do not describe bacteria, you are just describing their DNA. So you need to demonstrate that the, the, the virus particles or the bacterium cells are present indeed, and any given population size to constitute a good inoculum to generate a disease, okay? So, and then, Jack, this is global environmental uh, change, Climate change is, is one uh, uh, aspect of global environmental change. Patterns and process on emerging risk uh, is another dis uh, direction. So many different patterns and processes are <coughs> happening today uh, with climate change or other global environmental change uh, drivers that exert the same pressures on viruses, on bacteria as well. So, some take home messages. So, I mean, system biology uh, really goes beyond the border of a petri dish. I mean, we need to open the window to get a bigger picture and to consider that system biology includes the population level, the community level. So, in ecology, community is totally different than in epidemiology. I'm speaking about community, uh, ecological community or even to uh, include the ecosystem level. Okay. First, system biology comes from ecology and not the, the field of health sciences. Both short and long-term processes may happen and interact to produce disease patterns, epidemics, frequencies, number of cases. So what we observe with, let's say, the example of the El Nino, El Nina phenomenon for many infectious diseases is, I mean, an increase in the frequency of epidemics happening now. This is the case for cholera fever, but this is the case for vert vector bond disease as well. We need to develop training in time and space series analysis. We totally uh, forgot to train the new generation in time series and space uh, series analysis. So we have to develop this, and even in France, okay, some disease drivers are proxized, like the sea surface temperature can be used to develop what we call early warning system. Remember the strong correlation between sea surface temperature and the development and the boom of uh, bacteria like Vibrio cholerae into the ecosystem because this is a, a driver participating to the ecological niche of the bacterium. Uh, so we need to develop early warning system. So in my institute, we are de developing this in epidemiology and inter international public health. Uh, so we can also discuss about direct causation versus non-linear non systems because these are non-linear systems. So we need to grasp a bigger picture which is more conform to the health reality and health concern, notab notably in developing countries. Uh, so uh, I acknowledge my different partners on the aviation and in some side event organizer, organizer for inviting me. And this is the literature, scientific literature I used to produce this presentation. And uh, this is a three national assessment reports on climate change on health or emerging infections that I led or called it during the past years. So thank you very much.